Uh, hi everyone, my name is Yarin Ozeri. I am a software engineer and security researcher at Akamai. Uh, today I will be talking to, about, to you about uh, my recent work on uh, real-time DNS exfiltration detection. Um, so we already talked about me. Um, so our agenda for the talk is to introduce uh, the topic of DNS tunneling and exfiltration. Um, then I will proceed to discuss uh, some uh, detection uh, methods, um, their limitations, and my proposed solution. Um, and now it addresses those limitations. Uh, we'll continue with an evaluation of uh, the method, comparing it against three state-of-the-art methods, and we'll end with, an, um, with, a, with a discussion. Uh, so DNS tunneling is basically the exploitation of the DNS protocol to tunnel malware data and other kind of data through a client-server model um, in a manner that uh, violates the network security policies. Uh, the main use cases, as I mentioned, is uh, data exfiltration, but it can also be used uh, for a C2, um, for C2 um, communication between botnets and the botmaster, as well as uh, bypassing captive portals. Um, so there are also some benign use cases, mainly for uh, antivirus agents to uh, send signatures to scan to their uh, server. Uh, in practice, all that is required is to register a domain name uh, or multiple, um, set an authoritative name server for this uh, doma registered domain name, and basically after that, the malware main code uh, data within DNS packets. Uh, there are also uh, an, in abundance uh, DNS tunneling tools that are freely available, which makes it uh, very easy to set up attack. Um, you may encode uh, the DNS exfiltrated data uh, with the, within the uh, DNS domain to be resolved. Um, you can also encode a modest amount of data within the resource record to be resolved type, uh, two, two bytes per packet, and you may also use the timing um, to exfiltrate data. Uh, I'll continue with a demonstration of um, this exfiltration attack. Um, so in this case, uh, the host is being compromised um, by uh, downloading a malware by a malicious attachment. Um, and there, after that, the um, malware um, exfiltrates data within uh, the DNS query name to be resolved as a prefix. Um, and then via the uh, DNS protocol, the uh, packet reaches the uh, authoritative name server of the attacker.com zone, which is, as mentioned, controlled by the attacker. The data reaches him and them, and uh, the attacker may encode a response which is then propagated back to the um, malware and may include uh, additional comments. Uh, so if I haven't convinced you that yet that this is um, a threat, there is many cases of uh, APTs using uh, DNS, DNS tunneling, as well as uh, malware which used it to exfiltrate uh, private data. Um, so, there is a lot of uh, research conducted on the topic. Uh, there are two main uh, types of uh, DNS uh, exfiltration detection. One of them is the payload-based uh, methods, which basically are based on inspecting singular uh, 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 queries. And the other one is traffic-based, where um, the entire volume is inspected and uh, features are extracted. Um, most of the research in recent years was uh, based on uh, DNS, on uh, machine learning solutions, um, mostly unsupervised ones. Uh, so the f features that are being used um, are usually based on the length of the DNS query and uh, information-based uh, features, uh, which is, makes sense as it's usually uh, long and encrypted and encoded kind of uh, traffic, but also the DNS uh, resource record type uh, may also be used because uh, there are some uncommon query types like null and txt, which allow 
uh, more data to be uh, sent back in the DNS response. Um, so one uh, method um, is the one presented by uh, Vern Paxson et al. Uh, they're basically, they, their method is basically based on information theory for every pair of uh, source client API and destination uh, reg registered domain. And their method aggregates uh, the subdomains on a daily basis. Uh, they compress them with general purpose, general purpose uh, compression algorithm and take the output as the information uh, quantity. Um, this quantity is then compared against uh, some uh, threshold, and if it exceeds it, the method raises an alert. Um, the second method, which is based on unsupervised uh, machine learning, um, is uh, based on the isolation forest, uh, isolation forest uh, um, model. Uh, so in this query, in this uh, method, queries are collected in a similar manner. Um, uh, the, the features are generated on a per in, in a sliding window manner. Um, the main features are the longest meaningful word, uh, so they calculate for each query the, the longest uh, English word, word encoded within the uh, query and they take this average over a period of time, um, as well as average entropy. Um, as you can read, it's, uh, it can be quite slow. Uh, up to six hours may pass by the time of detection, but it also can detect very slow um, DNS exfiltration events. And the final one, uh, which is a payload-based unsupervised method, so features are actually extracted on a per query base. Um, it, it is essentially a true real-time solution, although its scalability is quite questionable because the amount of uh, features that are needed to be extracted. Uh, so this leads us to what I consider the limitations of the existing methods. Uh, they mostly focused on improving uh, accuracy and efficacy. But uh, as a result, they, uh, the, most of the research was dedicated to uh, offline m uh, methods in nature, uh, which allows for a lot of data to be exfiltrated by the time of detection. Um, so the solution is to propose some method which can classify DNS queries as they are being resolved, um, and preferably directly on the DNS resolver. Uh, so this leads us to my method. Um, the idea, it's, it is, it's inspired by the work of uh, Paxson. Uh, the way I do the information estimation is by, um, is by, <coughs> is by uh, um, collecting the, um, so the, the idea is to quantify the amount of information that is transmitted to the registered domains based on the unique subdomains. Um, and raise an alert if the amount is exceeds some predefined threshold. Um, these kind of uh, domains are called information heavy heaters, um, which is based on the idea of information of, of heavy heater detection in streams. Um, so the issue with this uh, solution is that in order to provide accurate uh, quanti uh, quantity uh, estimation. Uh, I will need, I'd need to uh, collect the entire uh, queries over the DNS query stream, which requires memory that is linear, linearly dependent in the DNS stream size, which can be quite large. For this, we, in, we introduce the use of uh, sketching algorithms. Uh, sketch algorithms, if you're not aware, is uh, basically, allows, basically, uh, provides you with a compressed representation of a data stream. Uh, these are solutions from the big data world um, for real-time uh, analytics performance. Um, they, allow, they basically allow us to provide very accurate estimations of tasks that are difficult to do without um, inspecting the entire stream. Uh, there are many, uh, many uh, examples of such algorithms. Uh, like the account min sketch and the Apple log, which provides you with an 
very accurate approximation of the number of distinct elements in a stream. Um, they were all, the hyperlog was used in previous research for uh, load balancing and DDoS protection. Uh, so in our case, we modeled the uh, DNS query stream as a stream of uh, domain subdomain pairs. So for each DNS query, I, we, we split it to the subdomain, which is the prefix and the register domain. Uh, so IBHH maintains a fixed cache size throughout its ex execution. Uh, we can allow us to we can allow to only hold a fixed um, cache by incorporating uh, weighted sampling techniques, uh, which with very high probability allow us to uh, detect the heavy heater domains. Um, so I, and, and in addition, I incorporate a, a variation of the hyperlog log, which instead of counting distinct information, is able to uh, give a kind of weight to the uh, distinct um, to the distinct uh, um, query, um, where the rate is the uh, length of this uh, of the subdomain. Uh, so, given the way that the IBHH algorithm works, uh, popular dom domains with many subdomains are very likely to be included in the cache. Uh, we therefore incorporate um, an allow list based on popularity-based uh, lists to reduce this uh, unwanted effect. Um, so now we proceed with uh, a with, uh, demonstration of how IBHH uh, works in actuality. Uh, so in this case, we have a compromised host, and you can see it tries to exfiltrate uh, some data. Uh, the enterprise uh, DNS gateway um, uh, updates the information count of the mal.com uh, based on the length of the, um, the subdomain. Um, yeah, so the hyperlog instance is adds the uh, subdomain. The information um, increases, but given that it didn't. Uh, it didn't exceed the detection threshold, the DNS query is uh, allowed to propagate. Now the malware uh, exfiltrates another one. This time, the amount of information exceeds the detection threshold. The query is blocked, and an alert is raised for the enterprise SOC team. And all of this happens right on the DNS resolver. So for our experiments, we collected uh, 50, over 50 billion queries uh, targeted at more than 40 million uh, distinct registered domains over the course of eight days from uh, enterprise um, organizations that are monitored by, by, by Akamai. Uh, so we take this data, we inject into it uh, malicious traffic with over 13, 13 under distinct domains. Uh, we simulate different scenarios. Uh, the first is web browsing or with the iodine tool. The second is the exfiltration of uh, credit card details out of point of sale, uh, similar to the framework point of sale uh, malware, which was used in several such campaigns. And the third is backdoor Dennis, which simulates C2, communi C2 communication. Um, we, we train the, um, the methods and we measure the TPR and FPR uh, based on the number of registered domains that are being alerted. And we apply the peacetime allow list, uh, the tranquil allow list for all the methods. Uh, so for the results, um, so you can see that the IBHH is competitive in pretty much every setting. Um, you can see that in the final one, it much um, surpasses the uh, other real-time solution, and it provides very uh, competitive results to the offline uh, methods across the board. Uh, so we proceed with a real-world evaluation. We essentially executed the IBHH algorithm over the course of a month in a test environment with real data. Um, with different uh, detection thresholds. Um, so in this 
presentation, I will talk about the alerts we saw for the case where we used the detection threshold of 15 bytes per second. Um, there were three true positives and uh, four uh, false positive. Uh, so the first example of uh, real DNS exploration that we, or it will more likely done DNS tunneling is a real case of uh, of uh, iodine. Um, we can conclude it's iodine based on the uh, responses. Um, yeah, the second one is a base 64 kind of tunnel uh, that we spotted. And the final one, which we couldn't really conclude uh, if it's uh, DNS tunneling or not, but it looks like uh, X encoded data. Um, yeah, so these are the samples that we observed. Um, in terms of performance, so we simulated uh, DNS queries streams with uh, about 35 million queries, and we tested the computational and memory um, use of the different methods. Um, so IBHH and the other real-time one use the least amount of data, which is expected, but the difference in time is very significant even between IBHH and the other uh, real-time solution, about 20 times faster, uh, which makes it much more suitable for large-scale uh, deployments like the one in uh, Akamai. Um, so now we'll discuss some of the limitations. So the main, uh, so the first limitation is that we can only, so IBJSH can only detect exfiltration if it's based on the query, the query name field. Um, this isn't really unique to IBJSH because most of the methods are designed like that, uh, except for Paxon, I guess. Um, the second one is that it is very un unlikely to detect exfiltration campaigns if they are spread across many domains. Um, this is because we detect uh, domain heavy eaters, so we only count information based on the registered domain, based on the target registered domain. Um, an idea how to address this is to, which I haven't verified yet, is instead of uh, accumulating the information per registered domain, uh, do it per source uh, client IP. Um, that way, it doesn't matter which which are the target destination domains, but as long as the amount of information is um, anomaly large uh, for the specific uh, source host, it can be detected. Uh, so the third one is that it cannot detect, uh, it, it, it cannot operate on uh, encrypted data if it doesn't, if it cannot, uh, uh, inspect the packet itself because it's it relies on being able to inspect the uh, query, the DNS query. Um, and the final one is that the information counting is based only on unique subdomains. So this is both um, a pro as it allows us to reduce the false positive alerts, but it also means that if, for example, the attacker uses a limited size of uh, uh, messages, for example, he may encode data within with only three kinds of messages. Um, so we we won't be able to detect such an attack. Uh, this is also a limitation for the amount of data that the attacker may exfiltrate, because you can only encode very few bits per message, and it makes it very uh, unreliable uh, method. So to conclude. Uh, I presented IBHH, a simple yet effective uh, DNS exfiltration detec detection that is uh, algorithm that is that uh, can be deployed uh, right on DNS resolvers. Uh, I've shown uh, very competitive results um, for it. Uh, we award detections with minimal uh, false positive alerts. Um, as a future work, I mean, it's already being done, but we're, we plan on uh, deploying it uh, right on uh, Akamai DNS resolvers. It's currently in very late uh, test stages, and uh, I believe that's it. If you have any question, you may ask me. OK. 
Okay, we have time for one question. Don't be shy. Okay, one question. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I have a little question regarding um, the qualification of um, the alerts. So you, you have some false positives, uh, so few. But how do you proceed to qualify this kind of, uh, of detection to know if it is a false positive or not? Because it is a bit difficult to, to investigate this kind of event. Yeah, it's based on manual inspection. That's how we determine it. Uh, we have uh, analysts which inspect the, uh, um, the uh, alerts. Um, you, you, they, this is one difficulty with DNS uh, tunneling. You cannot really distinguish between benign and malicious, uh, between benign and malicious uh, tunnels. Um, I don't think there's any method that can really emulate without uh, manual inspection and using the use of a low list. You don't yet have uh, uh, some kind of uh, ma manual, but uh, process that uh, conduct uh, easily to know and fast, fastly uh, if it is a false positive or not. It remain a deep, uh, deep analysis of uh, of the alert. I mean, you you, ca you can like maybe use uh, some uh, rule of thumbs, so, like you can maybe inspect the. I can maybe take into account like the date of uh, registration of the domain and how long it has been used. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we, we use it for example. So to, so there are many uh, antivirus um, engines that use DNS for the file um, for looking uh, uh, for looking up uh, um, file hashes of uh, files to be uh, um, to be scanned. So that's how you can know, you know, based on some rule of thumbs. We can maybe discuss order if you want. Okay, thank you very much.